After drawing the Lewis structure, the next thing you want to look at is what is the shape of the molecule. And the theory we're going to use to determine the shape is called VSEPR, which stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion, which basically means electrons, both bonding pairs and non-bonding pairs of electrons, repel each other. So, for example, when you draw the Lewis structure of carbon dioxide, you'll end up with two double bonds around the central carbon. The purple structure has a 180 degree shape and the red structure has a 90 degree shape. But both of these follow all the rules for the Lewis structure and the question is which one is the better shape. These electrons repel each other so putting them 90 degrees apart from each other is not going to be a low energy state. The bonding electrons, the non-bonding electrons, get as far apart from each other as possible if they go 180 degrees away from each other. So carbon dioxide ends up having a linear shape to minimize the repulsions. Boron trifluoride, one central atom, three terminal atoms. Remember boron was an octet exception this is stable with just six electrons and the farthest apart that they can get from each other is 120 degrees. So this shape is a triangle shape and all of the atoms are in the same plane so we're going to call this trigonal planar. When you put more and more atoms around the central atom, here we have four, the shape gets a little bit more complicated because it looks like 90 degrees and in a two-dimensional world, the hydrogens would get 90 degrees apart from each other. But because we are in a three-dimensional world, these hydrogens can get farther apart from each other. They can actually get about 109 degrees apart from each other. And this picture is trying to show the three-dimensional representation of this shape. A single line like these are in the same plane as the paper. This wedge is trying to show a three-dimensional perspective just like a three-dimensional picture of uh, a highway ending at the horizon. The horizon is where the road narrows and where you're standing it's wider so this is coming out of the paper at you. And the dash is the opposite of the wedge. This means it's going into the paper. It's going away from you. This shape is called tetrahedral. And because carbon is such a common element, the tetrahedral shape is a very important three-dimensional shape. When you go to five terminal atoms, you end up with a shape like this, which has a triangle and then an axis cutting through it. The points on the triangle are 120 degrees apart from each other, and from the other two points, to the triangle. This is a 90 degree angle. The points, the corners of the triangle are called equatorial positions and the ones on the axis cutting through it are called axial. This shape, if you filled in the edges, this would be a trigonal base and you would have a pyramid pointing to the top and a pyramid pointing to the bottom. So this is trigonal bipyramidal. The highest we're going to go is to have six terminal atoms. And it's very similar to the last shape. Instead of a triangle base, we have a square base. And then we have a pyramid to the top or to the bottom. The difference is all of these are equivalent positions. There's no difference between equatorial and axial. The only shape where you have a difference is trigonal bipyramidal. 
This shape, if the name were consistent, we would call this square bipyramidal, but instead it's called octahedral. Octa for eight, hedral for faces. When you fill in the pyramids, you'll count that there are four sides to the pyramid to the top and four to the bottom, so you get an eight-sided shape. Fortunately, all of these geometries are given on Table 9.6. And a version of Table 9.6, here's one part of it, a version of this is on your formula sheet, but it doesn't have bond angles, it doesn't have the dipole moment, and it doesn't have the picture. So it has this part of the table, but as long as you can figure out the three columns, you can figure out the two types of geometries. The first type is called the electron geometries. So this is looking at all of the electrons, whether they're bonding or non-bonding. And the molecular shape is usually the more important one. This is the shape of just the atoms. So typically when a problem says, what's the shape of this molecule, they're referring to molecular shape, not electron geometry. The total number of bonding and non-bonding regions around the central atom is the steric number. Ligands, those are the terminal atoms connected to the central atom. And then you have the lone pairs on only the central atom. So as an example, if you have the molecule ammonia, NH3, the steric number is four. There are four regions of bonds and a double bond or triple bond is still just one region for the counting of the steric number. Three are bonding and one is a lone pair. So when you use the table we're looking for a steric number of four which has three ligands, three atoms connected to it, and one lone pair, the electrons take up a geometry that's tetrahedral, but the atoms take up a shape that's trigonal pyramidal. So the nitrogen is above the plane where the three hydrogens are, and then we have a lone pair of electrons at the top that gives us this trigonal pyramidal shape.